our community. This is Local 5 News with Tom Zelaski, Aaron Davison, and Chief Meteorologist Luke Sampy. 8.15 this evening, new Packers head coach Matt LaFleur, his wife and two children entering Lambeau Field for the first time. Good evening. Thank you for joining us. I'm Tom Zalaski. And I'm Aaron Davison. It is official. Tonight, Packers CEO Mark Murphy announced that Matt LaFleur is the 15th head coach in the history of the Green Bay Packers. Let's go to sports director Burke Griffin about LaFleur's arrival tonight. Burke? Well, that's right, Aaron and Tom. Earlier in the day, there were several reports that Matt LaFleur would be flying to Green Bay at some point this evening, and he did, albeit a little bit later than expected. But as you mentioned, after 8 p.m., the 15th head coach of the Green Bay Packers arrived at the airport, accompanied by his wife and two sons. From there, LaFleur went to Lambeau Field, where he met with team personnel and presumably signed what the NFL Network is calling a four-year contract with a fifth year option. Now, if you haven't heard by now, the former Titans offensive coordinator has worked his way up through the coaching ranks, working for the Rams, Falcons, and Redskins prior to being with Tennessee. And LaFleur has a full endorsement from one of his former bosses. You know, it's a reflection of everybody that's been a part of this. Um, that's what you love so much about football. Um, but I've, I would say this, I'm, I'm put in a better position to succeed because you learn about how to listen, learn, and then you lead based on the people that are around you here. And, and you know, that's why you feel good about it. And the Packers have scheduled a press conference for tomorrow at 3 p.m. We'll have plenty more on this story coming up later in sports. Thank you, Burke, and stick with Local 5 online and on air as we bring you that Packers news conference Burke mentioned tomorrow when the team will introduce LaFleur as the new head coach. Making national headlines now, President Donald Trump made his first primetime Oval Office address tonight as the federal government reached day 18 of the partial government shutdown. President Trump took his case to the American people, asking for $5.7 billion to fund a border wall with Mexico. Democrats have drawn the line at $1.3 billion in funding. This week, House Democrats plan to pass a measure to reopen parts of the government not affiliated with Homeland Security. The president has invited members of Congress to the White House tomorrow to, quote, get this done in terms of getting the government back in operation. And tonight we are taking a look at how the government shutdown is impacting our area. From airports to food pantries, this shutdown trickles down to the smallest of entities. The Local 5's Robin Agenye joins us live from the studio now with more. Robin? Aaron, Tom, several programs the community utilizes on a daily basis receive funds from the government, directly or indirectly. Some of these programs are hoping the partial shutdown won't last much longer. The Austin Straubel Airport is quiet, evidence the holiday hustle and bustle is over. Despite reports that TSA workers around the country are calling it in until they get paid, Green Bay's agents are ever faithful. As far as I know, uh, everybody is still showing up for work, uh, which is fortunate for us, and it keeps the operation running smoothly. Feeding America Eastern Wisconsin distributes food to 600 pantries in the region. The Appleton-based hunger relief organization receives food from donations and special orders. But some of it comes from the Emergency Food Assistance Program, a government program. If the shutdown continues, there will be um, an uptick in need from our member pantries, and that's where we would need more support from the community. Indel says food ordered before the shutdown should be delivered on time as scheduled. That supply should last through March, but new orders will have to be put out soon. Not to mention the people that depend on the pantries they fill. With the government shutdown, the food share benefits and other benefits like that will run out at the end of the month. So people that were using food share will then be relying more on the pantries. And so that on top of the government employees who maybe haven't gotten a paycheck in a few weeks will also be looking for other resources. And that's where we come in. Feeding America says this is the first time they've dealt with a shutdown of this magnitude. They only hope it ends soon. If you have an interest in donating goods or time to Feeding America Eastern Wisconsin, you can visit their website. You can also find a pantry locator on our website, wearegreenbay.com, with this story under local news. In the studio, Robin Uginye, Local 5 News.
Thank you, Robin. In Wisconsin News tonight, Governor Tony Evers has made the first move as governor by signing some executive orders today. The first, a state government plan to implement policies preventing discrimination of people based on their sexual orientation. The second, ordering his cabinet secretaries to recognize the value of state employees. The governor also said while touring the state, it is clear that affordable health care is in the forefront of people's minds. So health care executive orders were also put in place, including expanding of eligibility of Medicaid and protecting people with pre-existing conditions. We felt it was important that we have uh, affordable and accessible health care. And one of the ways that we're going to do that is to make sure that we take the Medicaid expansion money that uh, has cost the state of Wisconsin $1.1 billion over the last eight years will be in a position of doing that uh, with the legislators, legislature's help. And Governor Evers said more executive orders could be presented later this week. Keeping it local tonight, the call is out for 100 volunteers to help mentor at-risk students in three Brown County school districts. The plan is to help 6,000 at-risk students graduate from high school. Big Brothers Big Sisters has inspired a Green Bay police captain to join forces with other area organizations to help make that dream a reality. And one school official says it will take a village. Checking in with a student, how's it going? It may be a role where you're talking about the future, filling out um, the FAFSA, for example. The pilot program will include students at four middle and high schools across three districts. If you're interested in becoming a mentor, there is more information on our website at wearegreenbay.com. In Green Bay News now, downtown Green Bay is experiencing some vacant storefronts, especially on Adams Street, but there is a plan to bring some life into that area. The Adams Street pub, Scallywags, is looking into moving into that facility, and Hotel Northland is expected to bring movement over that way as they are set for their grand opening in February. Furniture will be here next week, I anticipate Monday morning, so the opening date will uh, we'll get here before you know it. Typically, when hotels like this that sit dormant for a long time and come back to life, uh, the neighborhood just springs up right around them. And there are a few new housing projects in the works for both sides of the river downtown, one coming near the rail yard and the other right there on Adams Street. A local community effort to make sure families stay warm this winter. Coming up, a donation drive to keep Brown County families warm. And as we showed you, the Packers' new head coach has arrived in Green Bay. Sports continues our coverage later on. Wind chills take a plunge again tonight. How long it will actually feel like winter around here in the Stone King 5 forecast coming up next. You're watching Local 5 News with Tom Tulaski and Aaron Davison.